Hello everyone, I'm happy to be in Vilnius. In fact, uh, Vilnius was my favorite city since childhood when we used to travel here every year or so in, the, in summer. So uh, today I'd like to talk about the role of gems and hackathons in game developer. And I'm Alexei Zvalov, I here represent the company FGL, the community of indie game developers. And also, I'm in indie game development myself since uh, 2010. I joined indie games, developments have released uh, 25 titles and won 11 awards. Also, you can find me at FGL as FGL Alexei, also at the Russian speaking game development community Flash Game Dev True as General, and about uh, Game Gems. I'm the organizer of Global Game Jam Ukraine, uh, judged uh, Game Jam Game, uh, judged uh, F FGL Game Jam and Flash Game Dev Cup, also participated in Ludum Dare and Kanobo Game Jam. So uh, I try to summarize in this talk the view to Game Jams from all three points of view as organizer, judging and participator. So uh, we, uh, we, with the help, thankful to team, we started talking about Game Jam in the previous election. So, Game Jam is a game creation event. Uh, it's extremely quick. Uh, someone calls one month event a Game Jam, but usually a Game Jam is 48 or 72 hours. In most of the Game Jams, you have to make everything from scratch. Everything includes graphics and audio. Sometimes you don't have to do it, but it's also a general rule. And what's uh, good in Game Jam as an event, you have to share your creation, because uh, the new developers, uh, for new developers, Game Jam is a great source of, a great source of game sources to see how some features were implemented. Uh, no, there are usually no restrictions to technology used, tool used, or team size. And um, what you should do during Game Jam is uh, that your game should fit a theme announced at the start. And sometimes the game jams are even not a contest, and the developers just uh, participate just for fun and for social functions. Uh, but other game jams also uh, have prizes in them and rankings and uh, helps you uh, self-establish as a game developer. So the biggest game jams, uh, let's quickly review them. So the biggest is Global Game Jam. Uh, last year it reached the point of 37,000 participants in 100 countries in the world. Hopefully next year it will cross even 40,000 participants. Ludum Dare is the biggest online game jam where every developer sits at their computer in the chair and participates in 2,700 participants, but three times a year. One game, uh, a gem which requires the participants to release a game within one month. Every month, 500 developers take part in one game. Uh, Nordic Game Jam is interesting, to, is interesting because it's a one-place game jam which gathers 500 gems. There are some other interesting uh, gems like train gems. Just when the developers go to GDC San Francisco, some of them initially fly to Chicago, board the train, and uh, while the train goes to San Francisco, they create the game within uh, 50 hours or so. So, what's interesting in jamming and why do so many people participate and why uh, it can be useful to participate for all of us? Well, uh, jamming is really a social event. The developers gather together, even if the jams are not held at the one physical location, the, jams will still, uh, the developers will still interact. But, besides the developers, the artists, the composers, the designers will also participate in game jams. For the students who want to join the industry will participate in game jams. From the other side, you can find headhunters and journalists who will gain uh, you press coverage if you participate in game jam and uh, make a good uh, entry. So, and all these parties interact and the synergy effect emerges and something really magical happens. So, why uh, in the gems uh, such constraints like time and theme are uh, helping create uh, unbelievable results within a very short time frame? So, let's uh, think you have an idea. 
you have an energy to create something, but if you just don't, uh, if you just want to make something, it just if you have a overheated vapor somewhere in the space, and if it has no limits, the energy will just dissipate, and it will give nothing. But if if you have energy, and if you have time limits, so you have to create something, but fit within a certain very strict. Uh, limits like 48 or 72 hours. If you have theme limits, so that your creation mu must fit a specified theme uh, named at the very beginning of the gem. If you have diversifiers, it's like sub-themes, some gems have some extra requirements which, which you uh, are recommended to fulfill in your game. And if you have some other special conditions, then your idea will skyrocket and you will create a great entry. So constraints uh, stimulate creativity. It's, uh, w it was proved by several research not uh, long before the game jam started. So what does it mean to make a successful jam? Uh, we launched a poll uh, among the game jam participants. And here's the formula. You should make a fun and innovative game which fits the theme exactly in this order. So the developers, uh, the, the, the gem participants, the developers, artists, and other participants just rated uh, these uh, components of success in this order. The game, it's a game. It must be fun, but it must be innovative. What sense of participating in gem and make another three in a row or hidden object? It should bring something new into game development, and of course, it must fit the theme to uh, be eligible for the gem. Also, uh, why is theme uh, often uh, proposed for the gems? Uh, sometimes it's uh, uh, like a protection for the pre-built games. Like uh, if the developer has a platformer, um, almost uh, ready to release it, and then uh, you see uh, the, uh, the gem, which, uh, which has like 48 hours time limit. Then some not honest developer could submit almost completed game and, s and show, look what I managed to do within 48 hours. Uh, but uh, actually uh, the gems, uh, the, the, ma the main uh, reason of for g giving a theme for the gem is a constraint which stimulates creativity. Uh, s there are some other judgment criteria which you should keep in mind. Uh, first, it's style integrity. It's not how beautiful your art is, because everyone understands uh, that within a very short time limit and everything is when it uh, needs to make from made from scratch, then it's very difficult to provide uh, great art. But uh, you should uh, keep in mind that all the game elements should fit the same style. A very good example was shown by Tim previously. Everything is black, but with a white or bright outlines. So just think of a concept which can be, uh, can, uh, uh, which can be described by, with one sentence, and all your game elements should fit this concept. Intuitivity. So, uh, yeah, uh, the, the gamers, the players should get into your game and uh, they should understand it, perhaps with reading some of the instructions, but ideally without them. Mood. So, what uh, mood does your game create? And uh, the final parameter often goes together with mood is humor. So, the game is kind of fun and you should uh, add some kind of jokes or perhaps uh, uh, some easter eggs into your creation. But it's not the uh, main judging criteria. So, let's give a quick review what kind of theme uh, can be proposed for the game jam. Uh, I'll pick some interesting, for example, uh, from one of the global game jam, it seems to me 2015, uh, the theme was, what do we do now? Uh, so it was really a funny story. Uh, before Global Game Jam, you have a video message from the Global Game Jam committee, and then the theme appears. Um, so the, the participants gathered together in the halls like this, started watching the uh, greeting message, and then here they see the, uh, the message, what do we do now? And they're still waiting, when will they announce the theme? And then it, it appears that what do we do now is really a game theme. And um, really, 
Uh, this theme uh, really inspired the creativity because it didn't tell the developers what type of the game th should they make. Uh, it, ga it gives a great variety of choices, but uh, what uh, the developers did uh, were uh, games where the player uh, was put in a very uh, quickly changing, uh, quickly changing conditions, quickly changing. Uh, situations and had to um, uh, to make decisions very quickly uh, another interesting theme for example 10 seconds so it was at ludum dare 27 it seems to me um, so the game should give a, develop, uh, a player 10 seconds to make something. The theme Greed was made for uh, FGL Game Jam. So you see, uh, when we review the themes, we see that it doesn't tell you what type of game you should make. It leaves you a free space for creativity, but it gives you some uh, uh, initial push where to start thinking about. Also, beside the theme, there are diversifiers. Uh, especially at Global Game Jam. Uh, these diversifiers uh, are optional, but they, uh, if you try to make a game which uh, fits uh, these diversifiers, it's a great, uh, uh, a, a great um, uh, work of game designer and uh, a great train, game designer training. Because, for example, here was the diversifier. You the game which uses only uh, four colors. If you are not experienced artist, if you are a programmer, it will be much easier to make good looking art using only four colors without wide selections. Uh, no spoken or written words in this game. Uh, this is a, uh, this is a great uh, sample of uh, a game which can be made, uh, which can then be, well be, will be spread widely. Uh, so you don't need uh, if you make the game. Uh, which will fit such a diversifier, you won't need to uh, translate it to localize to spread to other markets. Uh, the protagonist is unable uh, to go anywhere but forward. So we all played such games by catch up, and it's a diversifier by for Global Game Jam 16. So zero violence, for example, game can be placed with only one hand. Uh, where this procedure generated? So all those diversifiers are great. Uh, yeah, <laughs> this, this is one, and actually very interesting. Uh, it seems to me three entries which fit uh, this diversifier were uh, uh, submitted from Global Game Jam Ukraine. So here is how uh, in Ukraine we held Global Game Jam 16, uh, 2016. So, and now let's try to think uh, of Global Game Jam th theme interpretation. At uh, Lodum Dare in spring, in April, the theme was Shapeshift. Uh, who has uh, participated in that Ludum Dare? Okay, then th that's good. So, let's think, uh, you, you see the theme Shapeshift. What type of a game would you create which will fit the theme? Let's make an idea uh, in our head. So what idea comes to mind first? Perhaps we can make a game about a main hero who can change, uh, uh, who can change his shape and we, uh, uh, according to di with different shape, uh, the hero will be able to gain uh, different uh, abilities, for example. Yeah, it's a good idea, but it appears that Two years before, another game jam, FGDC3, uh, 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 had the theme uh, transmutation, and a game, exactly the game with the same idea appeared. It won uh, the people's choice, and it started the series of three or even now five uh, successful games of Transmorpher. First from web games, and now they're moving to mobile, I think. Uh, so. When you are trying to make your game fit the jam th uh, theme, you should make uh, your game original. So a good advice is when you have an idea, let's uh, the first idea. Don't uh, make the game which fits the first idea. Think more because uh, you shouldn't uh, uh, go with the majority. So, for example, uh, my entry. How I got into 100 in innovation. Uh, so we have a, a chain. Uh, which can be uh, 
sh uh, which shape can be shifted. And here we can drag these uh, circles to the slots, and then the story will uh, evolve according to what shape we will uh, uh, change. Uh, so I get into 68 in innovation, but it appears that this idea was also not unique. Uh, another developer from our community created the game uh, with uh, an idea alike, so he had to just drag the points, the shape was shifted, and as his game was more polished, uh, he got even uh, high in innovation and in the overall rating. Uh, so what uh, uh, should we uh, get from this uh, sample? Uh, you should uh, try to plan ahead and to uh, leave time for polishing and uh, for idea generation. Don't let all your game, uh, game jam time be idea generation and testing. But what was the winner? Look, how the Ludum Dara winner got to the shape shift uh, idea. So here the player changes the shape of the window. You see? So that was number one in all the categories. This uh, developer Managor, uh, here the player changes the shape of the game window and it helps uh, the player to uh, reach some tasks, uh, to uh, fulfill some tasks. So at FGL we have also several uh, success stories of, uh, uh, of Game Jam entries, which were then released as titles to Steam or to mobile or to web, and then eventually to Steam or to mobile. For example, the theme was dungeon, uh, the theme was cave, and uh, the uh, developer Florent Games released the game dungeon screen, and then he got eventually to Steam with such concepts, concept where a group of adventurers uh, travels across the dungeon and uh, fulfills some tasks. Uh, another interesting theme was simple possible ga simplest possible game. And here, uh, a uh, catch-up styled game, like we call them now, but with, that was even earlier than catch-up started building their games, was developed, and then uh, that was a beginning of an interesting success story. Uh, one more about uh, Global Game Jam. Uh, that theme, what do we do now? Uh, in Minsk, in Belarus, uh, they started Global Game Jam one year earlier than Ukraine, and uh, here they created the game State of Anarchy. Um, so the hero has to run across the city, uh, shoot, uh, drive the cars, steal the cars, uh, break, uh, break into the uh, buildings. And uh, you see how, uh, you'll notice the game style. So everything was uh, simply made, but uh, uh, the game uh, has the style integrity. So you can express uh, one concept. Everything was written on a paper with ballpoint pen. And this style integrity helped the, helped the game to win Global Game Jam Minsk, and then it helped to succeed on Steam as a PC game. So. Uh, different categories of people participate in GEM can get different uh, useful uh, for them. So here's what students can use and those who, who want to join game development. So first, it's, uh, is the GEM is a place where you can make your first completed game. Because, uh, well, as uh, Kasper said one lecture before me, often it takes uh, months or years to create a game. But at Global G at Game Jam, uh, you have a very limited amount of time, and you have to complete your game before this time runs up. So when a uh, wannabe developer uh, starts jamming, then it's very likely that after the jam, you'll have your first completed game, and then afterwards you can you can tell I have one game completed. Then you have two games completed, three, four, and so more. So this adds greatly to your uh, to your striving to the uh, to get to the indie game development. Another, which I briefly mentioned before, you can learn by checking the sources of completed projects because uh, most of the game jams ask their developers or even require their participants to make their uh, results open source to let others learn. You can find collaborators and see their cap capabilities, which is uh, really important. So, for example, you want to get together a team of 
enthusiasts, or even a professional team. Uh, sometimes you can just check the portfolios, but uh, you can just go jamming with that person which, uh, with whom you want to collaborate, and you will see how good are they uh, as artists or as, as, as programmers, as composers. Within, and you will really spend not much time to check how are they as a team, team member. Uh, and uh, next valuable point, you can establish a uh, context in the industry because not only the developers and artists uh, participate in Game Jam, uh, but also all the industry representatives. For experienced devs, uh, Game Jam is really uh, important because, well, first it's a place to experiment. So let's imagine an experienced game developer who spends uh, like uh, f three to five or even ten years making some social games, games for Facebook. Uh, it's a, this every uh, this task uh, becomes a routine. But what if that developer every, uh, always wanted to make, for example, a game about space, but uh, he didn't have time on work or after work to make such a project. But uh, when you participate in Game Jam, it's a great opportunity to experiment and try something new, because why would you otherwise participate in Game Jam? Next, so you, you can make all what you wanted and, uh, but didn't have time. And experiment also means experimenting with different tools. What if uh, you try some uh, new approach, which you don't have time uh, to make on your um, own project? You can test yourself in extreme developers' condition, like working 48 hours in a row. And you can, what, uh, for example, I got uh, from uh, Ludum Dare 33, it's a great way to overcome professional stagnation and rise after a skill plateau. So your skill is constantly growing, but you, at some time you will find that you are not evolving. And uh, putting yourself in the conditions of Game Jam will give you another boost to continue growing and continue uh, expanding your development abilities. So, and uh, this is also a great way to promote your studio. So, when you are jamming, you uh, you should post about this in social media and share uh, what is. Uh, What's interesting, share your creation, and if you are renowned as a gem winner, you can uh, everywhere mention it and uh, get more publicity. So what will you know after the gem? The key point is that you can make an entire game within 48 hours. That is really a refreshing knowledge and very inspiring knowledge. So when after the gem, when you have a created, a completed gem uh, entry, uh, and in one, uh, once, uh, for guess, perhaps in a month after a gem, in a year, when you have some difficult situation in your game development, but this idea will stay with you. So I can create a game within 48 hours, and this will give you additional energy on your other projects. But uh, the, uh, this experience will help you uh, in the projects which will, you will make after the jam in your everyday work or new, uh, new starts. Uh, oh, but um, don't, uh, here we should be very cautious because sometimes knowledge that you can make an entire game within 48 hours will make you to start making your game 48 hours before the deadline. <laughs> so here we should be uh, you should not uh, overestimate your, uh, your ability of game creation. So, I hope that you will try yourself in next Global Game Jam, or even earlier at Ludum Dara in December, and uh, hear the advice from the Jamas community, which can be useful. So, first, you should plan ahead and start with a fresh head. Uh, so, you know when the theme is announced, so you should give, uh, get yourself a good sleep before the jam to start working uh, during the first several hours because they are the most productive. And you should generate the, the idea uh, and perhaps make some prototypes. Uh, you should plan one or two night sleeps during the jam into your schedule because uh, 
Staying awake for 48 hours is a very difficult task and uh, don't be afraid to sleep. Your mind will still keep working and uh, thinking, uh, providing you some good solutions. You should prepare food and furniture for yourself, uh, just don't worry. But sometimes you will need to leave your computer, but uh, your head was still thinking, just uh, this happened to me during Ludum Dara 33, when I started work to six hours, then had to uh, go, uh, uh, had to go to work because we had uh, it was at Saturday, but is, I was still required there. But then, uh, just at work, my mind uh, produced me an idea of interest in mechanics, which then helped me to get into top 100. Uh, you should prototype early to see your idea potential. This uh, advice is co common not only to jammers but in general to game developers. And when you prototype, uh, why should you prototype? Because when you see that your idea is working, even on squares and circles, not on, re uh, on uh, very, not on real graphics, this will give you additional motivation to continue working. And uh, don't forget to take screenshots, because you might want to write an after-action report and post it somewhere in your blog. So take screenshots of your game in progress. And you should keep contacts with jammers, even if the gem is not uh, placed in one, uh, in one room, in one location. But you should uh, post in social media, because when you see that someone else is working on a different part of, of the world, this will give you motivation to continue working too. And this will help them. So Jam is a social event. Let's get back to this. And yeah, you should learn to save stop uh, to add in new features because sometimes uh, the Jam uh, the entry failed because the developers wanted to, m to add to the game more than it was possible during the limited time. And you should keep track of the time and the tasks. So uh, one of the tweets, which uh, my tweets during Ludum Dare, uh, which got several likes, was that the more, the closer the, the deadline is, the more hard-coded constants appear in your code. Uh, so, but sometimes, uh, when you see the gem is approaching, uh, sometimes it can be a wise decision just not to gem. Uh, because, yeah, jamming is a uh, very useful activity, very inspiring, but sometimes you can have a current project in which development is going really well. And sometimes you just uh, have a very long unreleased queue and uh, jamming can just in, uh, add one more project to your unreleased queue. So, that's why, but you can jam on your own conditions. When, uh, for example, Ludum Dara starts, and you see that you have your own project, just, uh, f uh, just work at the Ludum Dara uh, schedule, uh, but work at your own game. Don't submit it anywhere, but uh, sometimes you need a jam session, uh, ga game development jam session, to help you develop your own game. For example, I'll share some of the stories which happened with me. Uh, once I missed uh, the Ludum Dara theme with 10 seconds. So this, get me, uh, this gave me an idea to make a game named 11 seconds, which had uh, 11 tasks. Uh, and the, the player had 10 seconds plus one bonus second, which, get, uh, which gave the player more uh, ad additional score bonus. Uh, another story happened to me during uh, last winter's Ludum Dare. Uh, the theme was Grow. And I had a prototype of a snow game. Um, you see, it was uh, the end of 2015. So instead of participating in, in Ludum Dare, instead of submitting my entry, I just uh, worked at my own mobile relaxing game. And um, finally, uh, the December Ludum Dare had two themes, Grow and Two Buttons. And I had a prototype for both. So I spent those seven to two hours to complete. Instead of creating a new game, I completed my other prototypes and released this. Sometimes it can be uh, more useful for you as a developer than starting a new game and never releasing them. So, and uh, why did I miss Summer Ludum Dare? Uh, instead, I was making my game of a dream. It's a mobile civilization, so I will post about it in Facebook and tell you more. Uh, so, well, let's uh, consider such a situation when you have 
a diamond and it can become a brilliant but after several steps so you have a successful gem entry so what should you do first first you should of course uh, adjust your gameplay because uh, you have a gem version with multiple hard coded constants and to make you have you've got feedback after the gem which is really valuable and don't forget to give feedback to your colleagues and you should uh, take into account this feedback and adjust your gameplay then of course refactor to remove those hard coded constants which i told in twitter then you should definitely make a more content because you will show the, your game then to the players who don't care that you had only 48 hours to make the initial version. Uh, then of course you should improve art and sound and then uh, when you are making mobile game you should integrate some service functions like ads, social analytics, it is needed too for your, for example, if you're going to mo mobile to succeed. But uh, here's what situation we get in the reality. Here your mana bar is completely full. You have all these uh, energy boost right after, after the game jam. Uh, then you, when refactoring, well, it's still an interesting task for the developer at least. Then you are adding more content. It's still a fun task, but it's taking more time and more effort from you. Uh, then you are creating better v these tasks uh, if you are working in teams this can be paralleled but still takes uh, mana and then when you get to the final stage before the release you got just the, uh, that counter which many game developers like uh, don't like increased uh, so uh, at uh, the community of FGL we thought of such a situation and just at that final stage, uh, we help the developer quick, uh, go quickly through it. Uh, so the developer can just up upload mobile APK API, select the checkboxes, do you need statistics, analytics, add um, uh, in-app purchases or something, just wait a minute. So, and you then be ready, you should skip this step and go directly to the stores and succeed there as you're having your gem boost. Uh, so, uh, also a few thoughts of gem organization, because uh, I know Lithuania is uh, uh, participated in global gem even, even earlier, and you have a great uh, uh, long-going gem cu culture, so we just started li this year, and you have, you have more experience, but uh, for just we'll share our own, own point of view, and what problems did we face when we uh, when we were hosting Global Game Jam Ukraine. So uh, we, have, um, we analyzed what we did. So the biggest task was venue preparation. Uh, what was good that uh, Ukrainian Flight Academy uh, helped us where I work, I teach students uh, computer science. So everyone was in high educational establishment. And that uh, room with the power supply, with internet, furniture, was then used for other activities such as NASA space apps and other IT festivals and gathering. So on the gems, you will need, of course, volunteers, IT support, security, and don't forget about work after the gem. So you should help your gem uh, participants to get the most out of the, the gem uh, participation, just spread the word about uh, their games and uh, help them uh, with some perhaps mentoring or uh, establishing contacts in the industry to, to not let the, that count of unreleased game uh, increase. So, uh, what we, uh, the, uh, this is how Global Game Jam looked like in Ukraine. We had place for sleeping, for work, for relax. Uh, here the, uh, the flags of the countries uh, whose students uh, uh, studied our flight academy and here's me. Uh, so, uh, gems in, we analyzed the gems impact to the number of IT contacts. Uh, so many Students and professional developers established new contacts in our uh, social network group. And since then, for example, one uh, or even no, three uh, teams were born at Ukrainian Global Game Jam and now they continue working and uh, working more. And after the gym, definitely spreading the word uh, through the television, news, blogs, and uh, posts and social networks. Uh, so uh, let's stay in touch. I can. Uh, what else I can mention? 
where you can find me. And here is gameconf.org. Here is a scientific conference on German hackathons and um, game creation events. It was held in Berkeley last year. It will be in San Francisco this year. Uh, so if you want to, if you have some ideas on scientific research of phenomenon of jamming, uh, don't hesitate to uh, mm, to submit your paper there and they have extended their deadline till the 1st of December. So thank you for attention. <laughs> Questions please? Yeah. Um, basically, uh, I've experienced, you know, as, as you grow older as a person, uh, the 48 hour straight thing becomes problem, like a huge problem. Uh, any tips on that, Weber? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, so uh, what I did at uh, Ludum Dare, uh, fr uh, I made screenshots, ah, I have a bonus slide besides, can I? Yes, here it is. Here's how the game looked like four hours before, uh, after the end. Here's how it looked uh, uh, four hours before the end. Uh, so, uh, what was my schedule? I got up, it was uh, 5 a.m. in our time zone. Ludum Dara starts at 5 a.m. So, I uh, got to back uh, quite earlier the night before. Then worked uh, in the morning. That uh, then had some daytime activities, then uh, had a short uh, day sleep, uh, then working. So uh, you don't have to stay awake uh, 48 hours uh, in a row, and you, sh you shouldn't, uh, you don't need it. Um, uh, it was uh, two night sleeps, but then on the, n on the last night, uh, when the game jam entry had to be submitted, then I stayed awake right till the deadline, till the submission deadline. And for Ludum Dar 30, uh, 35, what funny uh, happened, uh, I had to work uh, with some other projects right before Ludum Dara started. So I got, back, uh, got to bed like at 2 a.m. Uh, that at 5 a.m. I woke up, look at the theme, shape shift. Okay, I'll go to bed and uh, in, in my sleeping, uh, analyzed uh, somehow in the background ideas. And then at 10 a.m. in the morning, I got with the idea of shape shifting as shape ch changing this uh, chain. So yeah, sure, uh, the, uh, the gem is not uh, endurance constant, a contest. Uh, it, it does not... Uh, compare how well the participants can handle uh, those uh, high, uh, pr high pressure of non-sleeping. It's a contest of how well you can plan your, uh, plan your time and uh, don't hesitate to sleep if you need. Yeah, and then mm -hmm. I guess it's a question. Uh, you said, you know, make screenshots uh, when you're jamming. Mm -hmm. so that's more of a tip. Just run a program that screenshots in yes, five yes. minutes. Yes, yes, indeed, it's a really good solution. And then you can make this, you know, mm. or perhaps even Twitch. Even Twitch, yes, if you, uh, for example, if the computer allows, uh, then Twitch is great, because Twitch, uh, really, uh, a good point about Twitch and your uh, game jam activity, because uh, a significant Twitch audience uh, looks at how other people program the games. And uh, usually when the game jam is going, you will get uh, several uh, subscribers who will look how you work, and uh, they will get inspiration from your work. Uh, I have a question. Mm -hmm. yes. um, uh, what is the minimum skill a programmer should have uh, to participate in a game jam? Like, uh, how do I know if it's uh, too early for me to participate? <laughs> ah, so I think it's uh, uh, it can't be too early uh, because uh, well, uh, about the programming skill. So. Um, as a programmer, so you can uh, you know some uh, already some algorithm like uh, moving through a loop for loop or uh, arranging data in the array. Uh, if then then I think it's enough to participate in game jam, because um, one point also I keep pushing uh, in the social network is uh, the game development technology is just a tool to get the image from your mind to the form with which the players will be able to interact. Uh, 
So you can uh, really make a game which will have uh, very little graphics and which can be uh, literally just on JavaScript, which will get some numbers inside, some numbers outside, but it will be really a game. Uh, but, and then this will give you initial push and then you will see what other skills you will need. Any more questions? Okay, then okay. thanks very much, Alexei. Yeah, yeah, so, uh, oh, the rest uh, question. Uh, uh, I say I have friends who haven't had the chance before who are interested. And, well, that's how my unit course was, uh, okay, how to I make sure the new piece get efficient and start with this first gem. Uh, so, what's uh, good about gems? So, how do I know what will gem give to me? Uh, is uh, the gems you usually have a very short uh, time limit. So, it's uh, it doesn't uh, hurt you if you go to a gem and you see, okay, it didn't give anything to me. Uh, so, it's a very uh, sh uh, very small pay of your own time, which you will invest in the game to check uh, will you get anything back. So definitely, uh, definitely, uh, it's uh, sh you should uh, um, you should tell them that they should try, at least. Mm -hmm. okay, okay. Thank you very much, Alexei. Thank you. Applause.